start the recording. Hello, everybody. I don't know who's leading this, but I'll kind of go. Um, I just went off of what we had kind of last week. I think there are a couple metrics updates. Um, Kevin, I don't know if you have, it's been a couple weeks since we've met just because of OSSNA last week. So Kevin, I don't know if you had any comments on, on this one. Uh, so this, this metric is actually owned by common. Uh, I don't know if we had decided, uh, it doesn't matter where we do it. We can do it here if, if you would like, or we could do it in common. Uh, my plan was to work on it prior to the next common meeting. Okay. Uh, but I can, we can certainly take it here. I, uh, it, uh, it would make sense for this metric to be kind of worked on in, in DEI, uh, as a, as a member of the common working group, I could probably, I would sign off on moving it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, it was on the agenda from two weeks ago on the, in DEI. That's the only reason I put it here. Okay. As well. Yeah. I, I, I know the, uh, yeah, I, th I think there was some question of where it, where it should reside. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, while we're here. Let's take a look at it, if that's all right. Okay. Yeah, that's fine with me. Yeah. So, um, so this is really about location of events and whether or not they are accessible and uh, not not accessible, uh, equitably equitably distributed. Okay. Okay, and are they, and are the locations? Across the globe? Yes. To, um, in location to the community members, I would say. Yeah. Put that in there. Uh, to fairly support all members of the community. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Uh, and then the, the rest okay. of the article or the rest of the metric right now is it's primarily the event location metric. And then I've copied and pasted in uh, some of the content that Elizabeth had created in the uh, the previous accessibility metric. So I really haven't had a chance to to peek through it yet. Well, let's take a look at it. We have a little uh, bit of time here. Do we want to take some time and and edit uh, individually, or? Um, yeah, sure. Let's go ahead and do that. The link is here in the minutes. There it is in the chat too. Um, yeah, maybe we could all take a look at this because maybe it's close to being done and we can move it forward, you know? Everybody all right with taking a look at it for a second? I'm gonna take the edits as a yes. <laughs> I am now here. Sorry, I'm late. Had a couple of admin stuff things to take care of. Well, welcome. Problem. Sean, we're editing this document currently. Well, thank you. And I put the minutes back in as well.
Kevin, I, Kevin, I think you shared the minutes document. I think I shared both, uh, but it's in there. It's just the first okay. link, Sean. In the oh, minutes. It's for, for, some, for some reason, I, okay, I must be doing something wrong here. For some reason, both links are, oh, wait a minute, now I see it. I see a second link. I just put it in the chat again for you, Sean. Thank you. I wonder if it's opening in a different. Okay, a question on the first, the question itself. Are open source projects events located? Are we talking about the more global ones or are we talking about the more local regional ones? I think it's always in relation to the community. So if it's a, a, a regional, a regional event would be the, the equity of that would be would be determined by the uh, the location of that regional community. Okay, because like for instance, Ofra has their summit coming. Up. They all have regional ones, but they're all open infra, if that makes sense. So in that case, Amy, Open Infra hosts events across the globe, like some regional, some kind of global events. Is that right? I mean, there's more regional teams run those regional ones, like Indonesia, yeah. just one. Uh, there's usually like one in Norway. So, yep. um, yeah. So, I mean, the health, so a larger open project could have more regional events, I guess is what I'm getting at. Yeah, I mean, that's quite possible. I mean, based on what you described, it sounds like Open Infra does a pretty nice job of thinking about this metric, even if they're local events. And I also agree with you that, you know, the resources a project has will certainly have a, an impact on where you can host those events. All right. Is event location inclusivity published, or is that one we're in the process of developing? That one, I believe, is published. Okay. Yeah. 
Thanks. I thought I thought so. I just when I saw the empty brackets, I wasn't positive. I was actually I was actually heading there right now to grab that <laughs> uh, that number. Oh, which I can just grab from the. Uh, never mind. I can grab it from the spreadsheet. Yeah, spreadsheet. I was gonna. I was grabbing it from the website. Yeah. Spreadsheet's better. How convenient that that's there. I'm not sure who, who did that by the who finished that up by the way. I had started. Uh, and I went what, to the finish spreadsheet? uh adding the uh the the last web page IDs. Yeah, I did that. Oh well thank you. So I went to I went to to finish that up the other day and I got there and I'm like, oh it's already done. It's like magic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are some of the tools providing the metric the same as the ones that are included in event location inclusivity potentially? We list uh, three websites and it seems as though they might be relevant. I think some of those websites are like how appropriate or how inclusive a country is or a state. Yes. I don't think that would tell but, you, but I don't I, think that would tell you how a project would go ahead. Well, I, it wouldn't address, it doesn't address equity in the same way as what you're saying. Yeah, it wouldn't tell you where a project is hosting events globally. Uh, okay. So this is like Amy was giving an example or even like what we do with chaos. You know how there's like gonna be a chaos con Africa Mm -hmm. There have been meetups held in Asia Pacific. We try to be in Europe and North America. Like we're trying to think about where we have events globally to include as many people as we can. Okay, I mean, it looks like we're making some pretty good, good progress here. Are there any... Are there any um, like big comments that people want to bring forward? They're seeing in the metric or something they added or something they removed. Uh, not on my end. I mean, keep in mind, this metric is a metric that's already been released. So we're, well, primarily, we're primarily editing it to include okay. the equity part, right? Uh, and I, th I think the, the edits that are happening here are pretty, pretty clean. Okay. Any other comments? I guess one question that I have is on, I'll share my screen. Uh, so in terms of visualizations, typically we provide a visualization as an example, not just a, 
I don't think we just provide like a list of things you could do to visualize. So do we have sample visualizations in the existing metric? Would be a question that I have. We don't have them, but I, 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 I think, I mean, certainly they could be produced, right? There's one. There's one in the contributor location metric. Um, okay. I don't know if we can just, can we just grab that and use it? Sure. I mean, I think we, I got it right here. You drop it in and we can take a look. Uh, that sounds like it would address your, the second one, the map of community members locations. Yeah. And I'll grab the source too. Yeah, I think that's helpful in, in this metric. It, I mean, it would tell me that. Yeah. We probably have a need for an event in North yeah. America, yeah, in I Omaha think... specifically, and then <laughs> yeah. in Central Spain. <laughs> I say, I say, it looks like the one of the dots may actually be in Omaha, though it's a little tiny. <laughs> And one's in Missouri, it looks like. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, well, I guess. Uh, you're the yellow one. Yeah. Yeah, I like, well. I don't know if we want to do an updated one because um, this w is obviously pretty old. It doesn't really show anybody in Africa. I mean, we could do an updated one, but just as a sample here, this yeah. is, I think. Is helpful. there a tool that was used to develop this? Oh, it looks like the church. Yeah. We should probably put that under tools, huh? I don't think I've ever seen this first one, map of projects events. Does the LF do that at all? It's a good question. I can look real quick. Yeah, I was just Googling that. I can't. OK. I don't see anything. Or any of the foundations, you know, like ASF or Eclipse. be kind of a nice map to have anyway i mean even just like for yeah. the chaos project to show over the course of five years yeah that we had an event and you know like a variety. even like a a yearly map that has all of the uh, open source yeah. conferences for that year would be kind of cool yeah uh, then compare them compare them yearly I don't think we have that at the moment. Okay. Um, and then a couple of questions I had through here, like data collection strategies. Should we? I went to okay. the um, latest version of the link and it actually has events in Africa on it. So I okay. just replaced. Uh, the old graph with the updated one that had the data that we want to see. Okay. Okay. What's that out in the ocean? Probably Cyprus. I'm not positive. Let me, yeah, me, okay. Maybe I'm not familiar with geography. Maybe it was a cruise ship. Let me see if I can figure <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can go back to that page I was on. Okay, and zoom, <laughs> zoom in and see what that is. <laughs> it so actually it does so appear. It, uh, yeah, it appears to be what? Is there an island out there? I don't even know if there is. The dot obscures whatever landmass might be there, which I would presume is small. Um, let me just take a right. look. Take I'll, I'll, just, I'll just make sure it's not like in the middle. I I suspect there's a landmass there, but let me try to find out. Like Cape Verde and Sao Tome are islands in that area. Okay. 
Okay. Um, so the questions, should we? Yeah, it's, uh, hey. it's say Tome and Principe. Or Sayo Tome and Principe. Okay. That is what that is. I'm not it's... familiar with those areas. That's interesting. I think we might want to just. We probably can't afford to travel up. there. So that's probably why we don't know about it. <laughs> We probably want to just clean up, I think, these data collection strategies a little bit. They're a little inconsistent in how they're presented. That's all. This is my own other comment. Not, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Just summer questions, summer. This one looks like a question for ourselves. <laughs> summer things to do. You know what I mean? So might just be worth fixing that a little bit. Um so Kevin, is this? Are you okay to continue to maybe look at these edits and? Yeah, yeah, I'll take I'll take a peek through that. I think the I think these edits are really clean though. I like the uh, okay. I like the direction. I think that question is uh, very good, uh, and it's uh, it's inclusive of the previous metric uh, as well. Oh. Okay. Okay, cool. Thanks, Kevin. Um, all right, so the next, any other comments on, on that? We hit the half hour mark. Oh, okay, yep. And so we had a couple other metrics that were kind of in the to be completed state because they're part of the badging initiative. And so I think those are now both um, through and posted. So you can follow those links here. Um, I don't know if I, I just, you can go through. Um, I do think as we, so this is kind of connected to the badging below. I think as we, as I was taking a look at these and thinking about badging, Elizabeth, I think we need, there's a little bit of like cleanup that we need to do. It's a few, like it's editorial stuff that I don't think requires um, like this whole group. But it's things like, I think, like, for example, one of the references I think is not using, you know, these points, you know what I mean? It's just like a list without the little dots. Um, do you mean in one of the metrics somewhere or where do you yeah, do? So that? like if I, if I was to go like here, references. Oh, they're missing the dots. I see. That's all I'm saying. It's just like, it's little things like that. Got you. Got you. And, okay. Yeah, and I think if we're going to be putting these out in front of folks as part of the badging program, it would be nice that they are like, we can hold them basically up to the light and they they look the same, you know, just really, yeah. really, we should do this for every metric anyway, but <laughs> particularly for these four. Yeah, and these um, don't have like the disclaimer because we need to still do that mo um, module on there and everything, you know. Mm -hmm. oh, that's moment. an AI, that's an AI for me to do. Sorry, I forgot about that. Oh, it's okay. Okay, so maybe like, like I'll just say like overall, add the disclaimer. The bottom. Yes, but especially for the four. Are you talking about just for the four, Matt? To like really kind Particularly of. Particularly for the four. I think because okay. those are going to have the most pressing issue if yeah. this is okay. these four are actually moving forward as part of the badging program. To, and I think they're going to have the most eyes on them probably in the next month. Is, you know, um, yeah, and totally then agreed. just kind of clean up the four metrics. It's just really all the formatting is consistent. I can take that action. I don't okay. uh, so I should note on the uh, the metrics template. There is guidance on how to use bullet points. Okay. However, that guidance was based on the Mars project. Uh, now that the Mars project is being uh, uh, retired, yep. that guidance is no longer uh, applicable. So we could okay. we sh we should probably remove that bullet point guidance from what the. Uh, the Do you remember? Just uh, we don't use that. we don't use sub sub bullet points. 
uh, because the okay. uh, when we did the uh, when we were taking these documents and converting them to PDFs, uh, it created all sorts of formatting issues. So the so the guidance was rather than using a, a bullet point and then a a sub bullet point, we would create a header and then the bullet points would be underneath it. I see. Okay. Uh, so I didn't just I did just notice that in that last document we were looking at, we do have uh, bullet points and sub bullet points. Wherever I was. Uh, oh, like this one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So which, yeah. which according to the, the template is incorrect, but now that the template is, uh, now that that guidance is incorrect, this is actually perfectly acceptable. Uh, but it may be a consideration if we're trying to make all of our metrics, uh, look the same. Is is what I'm is what I'm getting at. So if we're if we're looking at these other metrics for consistency, you may want to look at the way those bullet points are being done, uh, as well. Okay. okay, I can take a look at that. Uh, um, but I would I would say we could we could probably remove we could remove that uh that guidance from the template as well. Template. Okay. Um, and I think too, like Elizabeth, sometimes I'm not sure. Like there's like this white space here that I think okay. is not present in all of them, you know, Got some you. of the mm -hmm. are more compact. Um, I think two, I, I don't, there's not much we can do about it, but I, I think one, maybe two of the metrics don't have contributors. I mean, that's just the way it is. Yeah, we can't really opt in. I mean, we had talked about this before last year when we were doing the audit last year that you know trying to go back into the metric doc and see like who yeah uh, we didn't want to opt people in if they didn't want to i so agree i mean I it's just it a point it was just a point yeah i think it's okay too i just wanted to point that out we could uh we could pull those names off of the uh github record uh and only include them if they are uh contributors that have already added their names to the uh to some of these these documents like so we do have a core group that uh that exists pretty consistently on these so it would be it would be pretty easy to get sign off from that core group if we wanted to add we them could do that. we could just ask people like hey we want to add your name to these metrics and it's yes. right to kevin's point it's like you can see this list right here <laughs> this is that's, that's 90 percent of or 80 percent of all of those metrics and so I would approve of adding my name. I don't have any problem there. Kevin, do you approve adding your name? I do. Kevin, Sean, do you approve adding your name? Yes, I do. <laughs> uh, Amy or Katie, if, if we find you as a contributor on one of the metrics that doesn't have a contributor list, are you OK? Yeah, Anita? that's fine. Yes. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, maybe that's a good start, Elizabeth. And I can kind of help you with that too, tracking those folks down. Okay. Okay. Um, so those are my thoughts there. But I think everything else looks good. Okay, yeah, add contributors and we can say yeah. that Approved. Kevin, Matt, Sean. Uh, you can add the uh, in relation to this. You can add the, the uh, action item for me to take these four metrics, and I will move the. I will add the uh, those two new modules to each of these four metrics as well. What was the second module? Uh, so I believe there's going to be a module at the top that will include a link to edit the document. Oh, yeah, uh, OK. And then there'll be a module at the bottom that'll have a disclaimer. And then it'll also have a link to the stable URL. The module. Did we want to put those two links together at the bottom? Did we talk about that in some like putting the stable URL and also the if you want to make changes? We could. 
Uh, we could, yeah, we could merge that all into one document. Uh, That'd be easier for you. Just do one module at the bottom. Yeah, well, it's, uh, yeah, so the, the text for the, uh, the text for the, the, the URL that'll connect to GitHub mm -hmm. will say something to the effect of uh, to, to make edits to this document or to request edits to this document, go here, right? And that'll yeah. that'll mm -hmm. that'll take you directly to the GitHub page. Yep. Uh, and then the uh, and then the text around the stable URL will say something to the effect of you know to reference this metric in your software or publications, please use this stable URL. Uh, and then the disclaimer text we have uh, is based on that's the data disclaimer, right? Yep. Yep, uh, and that'll just be disclaimer, and that that module will be, uh, will make that module part of the template for metrics. So when we create a new metric, we'll just have to go in and edit the uh, those two URLs. Okay, I just typed that in there. Okay, great. Um, okay. But I'll, but I'll start so, that with the four, and then we can look yeah, at it, and we can, perfect. if we want to move stuff around yeah. or change the wording, then uh, we can do that before before we go across the board. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, because I do think those are the four most pressing, at least at this moment. Okay. Um, so I think we did address that. Um, I did want to just point out that there is a presentation of that. Well, here's the the current DEI.md file. So you can take a look here. And if you have suggestions, now would be a great time to make a pull request against this. This is residing in the all in open source repository. So this is a you know a partnership with all in and chaos. And I think for uh, reasons that may be really helpful in the future, it would be better to have this in all in open source, just from a maintenance and from a deployment perspective. Um, so please feel free to take a look here. We've talked about this metric, or this metric, we've talked about this document quite a bit over the course of the la last year. There have been a lot of changes. Metrics have come, metrics have gone. Um, and so anyway, here's where it's at right now. Okay, and then the there is going to be a presentation here. It's on May 22nd. It's on Monday. And really what it is, is it's talking about what the DEI.md file is and why we need it. So this will be a lead in to the badging stuff, you know, as this is tied to that. But I think the kind of listening to folks talk about um, what the presentation could be. It was suggested to not just do everything all at once for some folks that might be new. You know, we've had an opportunity to talk about this over the course of a year <laughs> or so. Um, and so just to lay everything out all at once, you know, like here's the DEI.md file, here are all the metrics that are associated with it. Here's what a bronze level badge looks like. Here's what a silver level badge looks like. Here are the reports you're going to get. Like if we did that in in one intro, it would probably be overwhelming for mm -hmm. folks. Yeah. And so sure. the idea is to just start with what the DEI.md file is and, and why um, it's important and how it can have an impact for your project, full stop. And then from there, we can probably have some follow-up. I don't know. Do they only do this as maintainer month every month? Or is it yeah, only just, this year. May. just May? Yeah, just May. So we might want to think about how we can continue to include people and have presentations in how this is connected to our bronze level badge and what that looks like and why that's important. And here would be the report that you would get and what you do with that full stop. And then, you know what I mean? Like so on and so forth. So we probably want to think a little bit about a plan about how we get that messaging out. Um. At least that's my thought. I don't know if you, anybody has comments on that. 
So, is, um, I mean, I think All In is going to handle a lot of the messaging, right? Uh, I I would kind of let Elizabeth speak to that just because you kind of have, you know, you work with GitHub and work with us. Yeah. Yeah, I would say they have way more resources than we do um, for that kind of stuff as far as like blog posts and, you know, visibility and they have communication, like large communications teams and outlets. So um, I think we will have to rely heavily on them. Um, but okay. I think we can also support that effort here and like things like chaos con or other open source events. If, you know, folks want to talk about this, then certainly, you know, can do a, a talk proposal. You know, I think so. I think, I mean, I wouldn't put it solely on all in, but I would, I would say they will probably do maybe like maybe 70, 30, <laughs> if I had to guess. Um, okay, so I mean, if if people on this call would like to think about maybe what a next presentation could be, and if they'd like to participate in that, you know, like how the DEI.md file would connect with badging in particular, because I think this one's not really talking about that too much. I think it'll kind of lead into that, but how that badging part is going to be an important component next. Um, feel free to reach out to me or Elizabeth and let us know if you'd like to participate in that. Yeah, or me. Yeah, or I'd like to participate in it too. for sure. And then I thought, involved. Elizabeth, you, yes, or Sean. So Elizabeth, me, or Sean, or Kevin, or anybody, just <laughs> let somebody know that you would like to do something. Yeah, just yell it out. <laughs> yes. And then I thought, Elizabeth, what do you think about as part of the talk, are we going to have slides? Are there going to be slides for this? Uh, that's a good question because it is uh, so. It is kind of a panel discussion. Um, I mean, I think that would be kind of nice uh, to do. But so what I, I don't know, okay, like okay, have a template you. or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? I think it'd be nice to do as well. Yeah, I think what's like up? like three to five slides max just to lay out the sort of, I don't know, geography or uh, space of what we're talking about. Slides without words for the most part, just to put context into the things that we're talking about so people don't have to rely on what we say entirely, but also don't make people sit through a long PowerPoint. Okay. Um. I mean, I'm all for uh, giving folks recognition and visibility for their contributions. Absolutely. Uh, okay. It might be a little confusing to list the event badgers here only because they're, it's like a little bit separate from this. Yeah. So I, that's what I was. So this, this whole list here is, so this list is the folks that contributed to the event or no, I'm sorry, the project metrics. You know what I mean? And that yeah, doesn't, the DEI, I, I don't even think file. I'm including the, yeah. So, and I'm not even including the ones, remember how we've had kind of a different set over time. So like I didn't go into, for example, project burnout, which was originally part of the first DEI.md file. And it like now it's, it may be pushed back to like silver or gold. So I didn't go and look at those. I just didn't have the time. This group here, and let me just explain why I thought to include them. This, these are the folks that contributed to the event badging metrics. So the ones that we use, this is not the badgers. These are the folks that contributed to the event badging metrics. And the only reason I thought to include them is this is, it's all part and parcel to the same thing for me. Like event badging was the first thing that we did. Um, it really kind of helped us think about our metrics. It helped us think about our badging process. It helped us realize like how project badging couldn't work the way that event badging works. I, I don't know. I just, that was the only reason that I had this list here and I'm fine to not include it too, but that was my logic. And then the badgers may be fair. Like those are just people who have kind of continued to foster the event badging process that it also has to me helped inform our project badging and just how we think about it. I think if we if we have time in the presentation to talk about or the panel discussion to talk about the badging piece, then mm -hmm. 
definitely leave these uh, like this is fantastic. I'm just worried that okay. we'll spend most of the time talking just about DEI, DEI.MD, why it matters, and like the badging will just be like maybe a sneak peek in the future or like a little tiny bit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And yeah, no, I, I do. So I think then at that point, the minimum is to include that. If, if you do <laughs> this, you can make it faster and make it a shorter statement if you do two columns and above the first set of names you put what category those are and then make the bottom the we should also like the people who make measuring our badging metrics our badgers make measuring the metrics possible make that a second category that tells them already what those are so we can you can just do a shout out you don't have to explain everything that you're on the slide yeah, that's fair. Then they're more okay. bigger sizing too for people viewing the presentation. And we should, I mean, and like, obviously, Elizabeth, I'd need you to, these are only the chaos folks that contributed to the metrics that are there. And so like, we certainly want to include Demetrius. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, as well as Sarah. For sure. Will Sarah be back other... by the time we do this? I'm just I don't messing. think so. I don't think so. Because it's Monday. So I don't think okay. so. All right. So are there folks, Elizabeth, that you think would be, you know, important to, to identify from the all inside that were really, you know, part of this as well? Yeah, I think mostly Demetrius and um Maybe Camille, but she's mostly done all in for students, not the maintainer's uh, side. You can think about it. Yeah. Nikki, Nikki Stevens dropped in for a couple meetings to talk about the DEI.md file. I'll think about how to say this, but what do you think about the mm -hmm. Um, we might want to say metrics uh, only because we're, unless we want to talk about the folks who are actually working on the project badging software and website and all of that, or you want to limit it to the metrics. I don't, I don't know. I, just, I want to make sure that it doesn't matter to me. Second, we, yeah. second category, you could say contributors who evaluated um our uh, all um badging applications or evaluated the metrics on badging from our applicants uh, yeah these are these are also folks that contributed to event metrics they aren't you, necessarily... do you want to do you want to mirror it with what you have on the left like specific contributors to Event badging metrics. Yeah. Something like that. Were they uh, separate things? Were they contributors to something else, or were they also contributors to the metrics? Um, these are just the folks that I took off the metrics. So the contributor lists on the metrics. This is okay. that's the thing that you're seeing here. I was going to, there's probably a lot of overlap between these. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe it just makes sense to just have one big list. Yeah. Uh, and not, uh, and not differentiate the two types of contributions. Yeah. So for example, like me, I'm over here as well, but I didn't like, just because I had one list, I initially, I didn't have. I like that idea a lot, just co combining. You could just do the number one, the title be thank you to all of our contributors who can who um, contributed to badging metrics. And yeah, just have two column lists like that. Yeah, the only other suggestion is if you wanted to have a project badging and event badging and a both badging column, but I think I don't think you have enough room for it. And I don't think there's as much 
overlap as would make that easy to do. And with that, I need to drop. I will see everyone. Yeah, we're here. Maybe Hi. maybe get rid of the uh, the metrics in that line. Just thank you to all badging contributors. <laughs> And that encompasses the the metrics, the, mm -hmm. the software, the DEI.md file, just everything. Yeah, and then you don't need that top line, so they can be bigger, the specific contributor sign. Format a little bit, but yes. Okay. And then maybe what do you think about this, Elizabeth? You, yeah, I would add on like Enoch and the folks working on the web oh. badging website and all the those folks also. Yep. And think, maybe yep. have uh, Ruth also look at this to make sure we don't leave anybody out. I would yep. feel bad. And maybe right, same here. maybe for the list we should go alphabetical order. We can do that. Aren't you glad you asked, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> and oh, also, I yeah. think <laughs> I'm just kidding. Let's do this, do that, um, and definitely like Kingsley. Um, okay, I, I'll share this with Ruth. Um, okay, great. And so the whole Elizabeth, I, my thought was just like as we end the panel, like we could just put this up there if that's possible, and just yeah, say, you know, as we're. We would just like to, you know, for anybody that wasn't mentioned during the panel, we'd like to make sure that we recognize everybody's hard work across so many different things we do with respect to badging. So yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. We're over time. Five minutes. Sorry, everybody. Have another meeting in five minutes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, enjoy, enjoy your meetings, and uh, talk to y'all later. Okay. See you later. Everybody.